So thanks for checking out this video. This is Sunday, my day off. I was in the house getting a little bored. Thought I would come out in the garage, uncover the car, and check it out. It's something that I try to do as often as I can. Um, during the winter when these cars are put away for storage, you get mice, chipmunks, trying to build their nest for the winter on these cars. I'm sure you, a lot of you guys have heard horror stories. Um, they chew up wiring, they can just, they could really mess up your car. So um, I keep this car clean, I keep it covered up. So what I do is I'll come out here, I'll uncover the car, I'll get a flashlight and I'll go around and I'll check every inch of this car. Make sure there's not any nest being built or make sure there's no nest period. Um, it's just good to do that. You know, if you, the, more, the more you come out, you know, the more often they'll stay away or at least you'll chase them away. To about two years ago, while I was doing this, I found a nest that was just starting to be built underneath the intake on the top of the engine, on these Coyote engines, they have a nice little valley to them, perfect place to build a nest. It, was, it wasn't It was completely built. You could see where they were, they were building it. Um, I was able to get my uh, shop back with a long extension on it, reach under the front of the intake, cleaned it right out, just like that, no problem. But by doing this, you know, you you will keep them away. Um, it's a good idea too to put some uh, some traps or whatever around your car uh, during the winter when they're stored away as well. Uh, that would also help. But anyway, that's what I'm doing, just checking it out. Um, the reason for this video was I needed to do an intro for the video you guys are about to watch. Um, so in that video, I install a UPRK member in a Fox body. It's a complete kit, it's a chrome molly kit. It comes with uh, the K-member, the lower control arms, um, caster camera plates, bump steer kit, and coilers. It's uh, so a really nice piece. Um, so we are a UPR dealer. If we can help you out any way, give us a call or message us. We'll be glad to help you out. So let's not waste any more time and get to the video. Welcome to the Savage Productions YouTube channel. Okay, I got the camera set up on the tripod here so you guys can see what's going on. Uh, so as you know, I've got the, uh, the strut bearing plate kind of snugged up on the bottom of this. So this, this kit comes with these spacers, right? So obviously this bracket goes up on the bottom this is going to come down onto the strut tower. Well, you have to put these spacers on here so none of this rubs on it. And that, that's what gives you the ability to, to move this around. Now, in the instructions, they talk about, you know, where the spacers go, where the, you've got the, the, the nuts that actually, you know, would sit on here doesn't even show washers in here but it does come with some washers so um, what I like to do you can pretty much put these washers either on the top you know where so when you tighten these down you know they won't damage it well these washers have you know they're designed to cut into it so once you tighten this down it, it won't allow it to, to slip, you know, once you torque it down. So it's really better not to have washers under that. Um, what I like to do is when you put these in, you can, you can put just a spacer on top of the strut tower, but these holes on the factory holes are, you know, pretty large and it, it may weaken it a little bit with these. So it doesn't say this in the instructions, but this is what I do. I'll get these washers and I'll actually lay them on top of the strut tower first. And then I put the spacer on top of the washer. That, it just gives you more of a bite uh, because these holes are so big. 
and you take you may take a chance on this one side of the of the spacer popping down into that hole and you don't want that so we're going to put this up in there we're going to put the washers on here first and then we're going to put the spacers on the washers then this will sit down on it and then we'll put the locking bolts that's basically what these are or locking nuts that's what these are okay so another reason that you wouldn't want the spacers not so much on the top obviously we, we already talked about that you want those nuts to lock in now you could put the spacers on first and then the washers on top but I don't think that's a good idea either because when you do that you're limiting the adjustment of this if you loosen these and you go forward and back it only goes so far and it will hit the washer so you don't want to put them you don't want to put them there if you put them on the bottom they don't they don't come in contact with this at all because the spacer is thicker than that see the spacer is designed to be thicker so this will you know slide freely without touching the strut tower so that's kind of what we're going to do all right let me get this on here i want to try to do this without scratching this up since we painted this up real nice um i'm basically going to start off by just putting them in and putting them dead center of these slotted holes the, from the factory they put these holes the two front ones are slotted so you can adjust the, the camber. Um, so I always put them pretty much dead center and that's where I leave them because you still have plenty of adjustability on the plate to go, you know, camber front to back. And then of course, this plate adjusts caster front to back this way, the camber in and out, okay? so. Let me go ahead and get these on here. Put the washer on first. It's a whole lot easier doing this with the uh, the K member out for sure. All right, so now. I'm going to reach up under here. Hope I don't scratch it. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's not touching it at all. So I'm going to just snug this up a little bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna set everything right in the middle. So I wanna keep, I'm gonna keep the studs coming up. I wanna just keep them in the middle of the, of the factory holes. It's kind of about right there. That's where the washers actually cover up all of the holes. And I'm going to reach up under here and hold the bracket. Yeah, see that works out right there. I've got these, I've got the bottom bracket pretty much dead center of the factory holes. As long as I don't tighten it too tight, it's not scratching them. That's another reason why I like to put the washers down first because it just protects the paint. And I can see where the hole is slotted right here and you don't have to be all that perfect with it because the adjustability is going to be on top. But I like to put this stud, these studs kind of in the middle. And then while I'm holding the stud from moving, I can slide this 
plate where I want it, which I'm just going to put it right about in the middle for now. And then I'm going to snug them up. That's good. Because I'm never going to move the bottom. I'm going to leave them right where they're at. Um, when I do a, when I do the final alignment on this thing, once we get it completely done, get the engine in, get all the weight on the car, then we'll get the uh, we'll set the camber. I've got a camber gauge. Um, we'll go ahead. We'll set the caster as well. Uh, what I normally do on these is um, from the factory, the the caster is set from the factory. There's not really any adjustment for the back on caster. There is, you know, for camber in and out. So what I do is I measure the dead center of the strut before we pull it out. I'll put a, um, I'll measure dead center of the strut and then I'll measure back here. I'll measure somewhere, I'll just pick a spot. I mean, you can even measure to the front, wherever you want to do it. But I measure dead center from the strut to the back right here and, I'm, and I write it down. I'll do the same on the other side. And then when I do caster camber plates, I will put the, if it's a factory strut and we're going back with a factory setup with caster camber plates, you just put it, you, you adjust this plate forward and back, you put it right where you took the, where you took the factory one out. If it's a coilover kit like this, you do the same thing. You just measure from the center of that strut to the back and you just leave it there. And nine times out of 10, you won't have any issues with the alignment pulling to the right or to the left. That's pretty much what caster does. It, it allows the crown of the road um, so it doesn't pull when you let go of the wheel. It won't pull left or right. That's what that does. And of course, camber, you know, is in and out of the wheels like this. And once you get it on the ground and you get it all set up, you can use a camber gauge to set the camber. Once you get the camber set up right, then you can adjust the toe. And you gotta make sure your steering wheel's straight, you know, make some adjustments for that. Or you can just take it to a, you know, somewhere and have an alignment done. But I don't wanna do that. We do all, all, all alignments because I don't wanna take it somewhere because they're not gonna be careful, they'll scratch this. I mean, there's, they're not just gonna hold it in place and keep it from getting scratched. So that's kind of how we do it. But for now, I'm just gonna snug it up just so it doesn't move on me. Like I got them in the middle, you know, I just got them in the middle for now. And we'll go ahead and snug it up because once I snug it up, I'm sure these washers are going to make an impression into the paint. And then that will allow me to put them right back where I want them when we do the final alignment. I'm going to go ahead and kind of snug them up a little bit more. I'm not torquing them all the way down, but I'm going to snug them up enough so they don't move because when I do the When I put the coilovers in, I, don't, I want to make sure these things don't move. I don't want to scratch the paint up. That's the thing. And I'm going to go ahead and snug these up a little bit. All right, so we're going to continue on here. I've got the uh, caster camera plates installed. So let me show you what they look like close up. So I've got these kind of centered up, um, like I talked about before, especially on the bottom where it touches the strut tower, these, the original uh, holes are slotted and I, I try to get these pretty much in the, in the center. And then for now, I'm just putting these in the center. I've got these kicked back just a little bit, you know, for the caster setting, but those will be moved um, later, once I get the car on the ground, get the engine in, get all the weight on the front, then I'm going to adjust the caster by measuring to the back, like I talked about before. Um, I've already got a measurement from before we start taking it apart. I'm going to just put it right back in that same location. 
then all we got to worry about is adjusting camber you know to get the alignment right and while i'm adjusting this plate i'm going to keep these studs in the same spot i don't want these to move on the tower i just want these to move and that can be a little tricky and the reason i'm going to do that i don't want to scratch up paint of course so also too i noticed when i torqued these down if you remember um this bolt barely stuck out the bottom here and was just trying to come in contact with the strut tower and i don't want that so um, i just have it loose right now so what i want to do is i'm going to um, get either a thicker washer for each one of these and most likely i want to get stainless because i'm not sure if these are stainless and i don't want them to rust um, i think they're zinc coated but anyway i'm going to get them either uh, thicker or I'm going to do two of them. On this side, I just took the one out and I doubled them. And I got this one tight and it doesn't come in contact with the, uh, I don't know if you can see it under there. Kind of hard to see, but that's, that's basically the thickness I'm going to shoot for right there. Okay, so that's pretty much it. They look good. They look really nice up against a nice clean paint job there. And I've got the, uh, the king member in. That was a piece of cake. I basically did that by myself. I was able just to hold it up because it doesn't weigh anything. It is chromoly steel, very light. And um, I did purchase the hardware kit, which includes uh, the new bolts that go up. They actually screw into the original nuts up here. And uh, yeah, it's nice. I went ahead and uh, Loctited them. The threads were in good shape. Got them all tightened up and torqued down. Uh, the front ones, uh, factory torque specs were 89 foot pounds and the back ones I think were 64, 65 foot pounds, something like that. And once you get, once you get the cave member in place, there's not very much movement. Um, you know, adjustability, side to side, front to back. So once I got it in place, um, I, I basically just pulled it forward. It only moved, I don't know, eighth of an inch or so. That was it. I've got the same exact clearance on both sides in the back. Um, the, pretty much the same clearance along the side rails, the frame rails here. I mean, it's, it's pretty much dead center. A lot of times you can, um, you can center the K member, you know, you'll get a lot of movement on them. So you want to make sure that the K member is dead center and it's not cocked left or right. Um, so once we get this, uh, get the engine in, get it all on the ground, um, I may do some measurements just to make sure that it's sitting in there square. That's the thing. You want the K member to be sitting square in the car. But the way it looks right now, it's, it's pretty, pretty square. I mean, it's, there's not a lot of movement you can, you can go there. So what I want to do now is I was going to um, put the bushings in the A-arms. So this kit comes with two different bushings. It, it comes with red ones or black ones. Um, the black ones are a little bit softer. They're designed for more of a street strip application and the red ones are harder and they're designed for track only pretty much um, road racing or drag racing you can use these on the street you know they work just fine on the street um, you may get a little bit more noise uh, from what they're telling me so since this car is going to be a street car we went with the black ones and what they want you to do is they want you to use um, a white lithium grease to to spray on there you can use the, uh, the you know some of the polyurethane bushings come with um, a special grease if you have some of that you can you can put that on there it's basically uh, you don't want to use anything that is petroleum that's the thing you don't want any type of uh, oil or any type of petroleum product that will eat away at this that's why they recommend doing some uh, lithium grease it works good it sprays it makes it nice and slick and um, that's pretty much it so i've got these all sprayed and lubed up and i'm just gonna put them in 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. It does come with um, uh, two sets of uh, spacers and they're obviously one's longer than the other. So you wanna make sure you put the right one in. You can, out, you know, if you put the wrong, if you put the spacer in the wrong one, you can tab it back out, it's not a big deal. But, so this one here is the longer one and then this one is the shorter one. Real simple, got these lubed up. They actually slide right in. You really don't have to beat them in or anything, especially after you spray them with lithium grease. And then I'm gonna spray this just a little bit. I'm just, I basically got these rags down because I don't want to scratch the finish uh, off the, on the powder coating. So this is the longer one, which goes towards the back. And these go in pretty decent once you lube them up. I'm just keeping my hand over the bushing so they don't come back out. This stuff really works good. Goes right in. Definitely want to use a rubber mallet. That's pretty much it for that. And then it also comes with a, uh, a grease fitting, so I want to go ahead and get that in there. What is that? A 930 seconds socket. Just gonna get that in. You don't need to over tighten them because they'll, they'll strip right out of the dew. And that's pretty much it. So that thing is ready to go in. Um, once I get these A-arms on, I will clean it up because I've got some white lithium grease all over it. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the camera set up over there and we're gonna get these in. Okay, I've got the uh, A-arms ready to go on. I got one laying on the ground right here. So, uh, what I like to do too is obviously you want to lube these up on either end of the bushings. And I also lubed up inside each of the brackets that's on this uh, K-member. Um, so these bushings, these, these metal bushings that they've got going through here, um, they are just a little bit wider than the outside of each uh, polyurethane bushing. And uh, they do that for a reason. So whenever you torque down or tighten down the big bolt and nut, it doesn't squeeze against these to the point where it, it makes it tight. Now in, in the instructions, they say just to tighten the bolt down the bolt and the nut, tighten it down to the point where it squeezes in the bracket and takes any of the slack out and then that's where they want you to leave it. Um, these do have um, a nylon locking nut, but I'm, I'm also putting some orange Loctite on the threads too. Uh, and I torqued them down to 85 foot pounds. You know, it doesn't squeeze against these bushings to the point where it's, it's you know hard going up and down but there's no play in it at all so i'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around and and show you i've already done the other side so i got i got the inside of these brackets sprayed with uh, white lithium and the outside of these bushings and these can be a little bit of a trick going in but what they, the instructions even tell you to do it this way and it works great. You kind of start off with the front one since it's not as wide and you kind of get it in there at an angle and then the back one goes right in just like that. So these are these are a, a metric um, 10.9 you know, strength, they're very strong. You could torque these down to 100 foot pounds or whatever, but taking these down to about, uh, I could see that they started squeezing together 
and they didn't move anymore. They were already against the metal sleeve or the metal uh, bushing, if you want to call it that, inside the polyurethane bushing. Once they squeeze together and hit them bushings, it's just a matter of torquing them down um, and uh, you know wherever you think it's, it's safe. You could take these on down to 95 or 100, and it's probably not going to cause any issues with these bushings, but I think 85 foot-pounds is plenty. Um, it is a nylon locking nut, but I'm also going to put some orange Loctite. So this one here looks like it's on the back. It's lined up pretty well. They're, these are both the same length, even though these are wider than that, so it doesn't really matter. They want you to put them in from the inside out. Now that I got that one, I can get this one going in. I've already got the got them started. I don't want to mess the threads up. I'll just kind of rock it back and forth. And I've been using this orange Loctite a lot instead of the blue. It's high strength, but it's removable. It's, um, it's not like the red Loctite where you, almost, you have to heat the bolt up. Uh, this stuff, you know, it does remove once it breaks loose, but it's very strong. So I'm just going to put this on just for a little extra, um, just a little extra safety. I mean, these things, once you torque them down, they're not going anywhere, but it's not going to hurt, right? A little bit on there. And then they've got the, got the washer, which I forgot to put on that one. Don't want to forget the washer. It's good to have it on there. That way it won't gall up the power cutting when you tighten these down. I'm just going to run these in until they just touch. And then I'm going to torque them down with my torque wrench. Take it to 85 foot pounds. And just check it. See, it's nice and free, no binding up, and everything looks nice and straight, and there's no gaps at all. So we're going to do this one. Probably don't even need to go to 85 foot pounds you know you could take it to 75 but I've kind of played with the other side and it there's no binding everything is good there's no gaps it's all pushed together against the metal sleeves 85 foot pounds that's good so that's pretty much it for that um, next thing is I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the the coilover strut, I want to get that kind of assembled up and um, go ahead and get them attached to the caster camera plate so everything's put together. I've got it attached to the camera plate and it's hanging and then at that point I'm going to put the spindle on. It's just going to be easier than to do that rather than put the spindle on first and then putting that up in there. So I'm going to get that stuck up in there and then um, we'll get the spindle on and 
we'll be able to put the tires on it and get it on the ground. Okay, we're gonna move right along. Um, I was gonna go over how to put these coilovers on the struts. Uh, these these are really simple. You know, they, this will actually work on a stock replacement strut as well. Um, the kit, you know, comes with the the threaded tube um, for the adjustment. And you definitely want to uh, put some anti-seize on the threads. Uh, it actually tells you in the instructions to do that or it voids the warranty. Uh, you just got to have some kind of lubrication there uh, so it doesn't gall up because this, this is aluminum. And once you get a lot of weight on the car and you start adjusting the ride height, you know, it, it can damage these threads. But I like to just take them almost all the way down. You know, this is the set screw, which you want to make sure that's backed away from the threads as you turn in this if it's touching these threads it's going to damage them so you definitely want to have this uh, set screw out and then it's got you can see the notch here the notch is going to fit over the actual bracket assembly that would bolt to your spindle and if you have a, a dust boot you want to take that off because it's not going to fit over it with the dust boot on there but so that's pretty much it. It only allows it to turn so far. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the dust boot on. These are the, these dust boots came with these struts. These are the strange 10-way adjustables. That's the adjustment there. And for now, I have them turned all the way counterclockwise, which is the softest dampening. So you can actually move this up and down. Then, I'm just going to put the springs on with the, uh, the part number and the name. These are Viking, you know, facing up so you can read them. That will sit right down on that, uh, that lower adjusting cup, if you want to call it that. And then, you've got the, uh, the upper cup. That's going to slide down onto the spring. And then, well, let me show you actually inside here before I do this. Inside, you see where it's got the machined area. The first thing that's going to go in there is, is a washer. And these are all really quality um, stainless steel. The washer is going to go in there first, and then the bearing and then another washer on top of that. So I'm gonna drop the washer in, drop the bearing in, and then the other washer. Now the instructions, they don't tell you the, to, to all these bearings, um, which, you know, I guess you can. You can put just a little bit of oil on there. It probably wouldn't hurt, but these are really designed not to have any oil on them. Um, they do have a little bit of uh, lubrication from when they made them um, they, and they basically they don't like for you to put a lot of grease or oil on them because it will attract dirt you know so okay and after that you would put this section on so what you can do is you can drop this down that's why I like to leave this loose so you can actually pull this down because the way this is machined, the washers and the bearing is going to fit right up inside there, just like that. And then this is a large spacer that goes in the uh, bearing cap on the cam caster camera plates. And you have a smaller section that's machined. That actually will go up because that goes up inside the bearing on the caster camera plate. And that's pretty much it. So now, see I like to bring this down to the point where this top spacer is going to bottom out because that will only go down so far and bottom out on the machined area of the cylinder here of the, the rod for the strut right there. 
So I like to put it just about like that because that way when you put this up in the bearing on the caster camber plate, you can judge what size shim to put on before you put the nut on. And the one that I ended up using, there's two different sizes that comes with it. You have a thicker one and a thinner one. And it all depends on how much thread you have sticking up. Well, we could put the thinner one on to get more thread because that will bring it on down and show some thread but I went ahead and used the, the thicker one because once I got everything tightened up the thread was exactly even with the top of this nut which gave us full thread count you know so I want to do that plus when you have a larger spacer it gives you more room to tilt which you don't really need that much room obviously once it's on but yeah, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, once I'm, once I'm there, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten up this strut all the way clockwise to stiffen it up. That way it'll make it hard for the, uh, for the strut to move up or down while I'm putting up in the uh, caster camera plate to put the nut on. So, um, I'm gonna definitely put some Loctite on this nut. And uh, once I get it on, I'm gonna tighten it up with my impact. And the whole shaft is gonna turn, but I can go in there and kind of hold on to it just a little bit and you know bump it a couple good times with the uh, impact gun and uh, it'll tighten up good. So normally these nuts are, they, they have a nylon, ring on the top that helps lock it it turns it into kind of a locking nut and uh, but you can use these as well and you just want to put loctite on them that's all so i'm going to go ahead and get the camera set up over there and we're going to put this on all right i want to get this uh start up in here but first i'm going to show you what it looks like from underneath for the strut to go up in there this is that long bushing or spacer that I was telling you about that has to go up in here. So this is pretty much what it's going to be. That's the uh, bearing bracket and the bearing on the caster camera plate. And that bearing right there is where this has to go up in. So you don't want to have it upside down, right? You want to make sure this is facing up when you put it on the strut. It actually goes right up inside there just like that. That's what, that's what you're gonna be looking at once it's, once it's on. So just kind of wanted to show you that. Some, uh, I've seen some people have these on upside down and it will throw everything off, okay? So it goes on just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set the camera up and then we're gonna get this strut up in there. I got this thing ready to go. I wanna go ahead and lock tight these threads before I uh, stick it up in there. So I don't have to fight with it. And I'm just using the orange. It's a high strength, but it is removable. You can use the blue, I guess, if you wanted to. I wouldn't really use the red. I guess you could use the red, but I'm just gonna put a good amount on there. I've got my the nut, the spacer in my pocket right here. And I wanna go ahead and face this towards me, which is the way it's gonna go. Of course, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be able to be turned in either direction. All right, let's get that up in there. Go ahead and put the spacer on. The one that I chose, get this nut on here. And I went ahead and adjusted the, uh, the spring. I went ahead and adjusted it up to take the slack out of it. 
because I'm going to try to keep any any uh, slack out of the bearing and the and the spacer for the bearing, just so it doesn't get any dirt or anything in there. See, there's a little bit of movement like that. So if I tighten up the spring, it'll take that away. And I've got the, uh, the strut adjusted as tight as it will go, so it won't really fall down on its own. Now, of course, once we get the, uh, the spindle on and get everything bolted up, then it's, everything's going to stay tight at that point. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this tightened up. while I'm holding on to it on the bottom side here. And that's pretty much it right there. That's nice and tight. It was spinning as I was bumping it, but I was holding on to the actual shaft itself as tight as I could in between the springs. And, uh, but that, that puts a nice lock on it and with the Loctite, it'll be good to go. And I can, you can see that the threads on the shaft are just barely peeking up above the nut here. So that way you've got, uh, you, you've got the nut covered all the way. You got all the threads on the nut being covered. So that's good. We could have went with the uh, thinner, uh, spacer below that and we would have had more threads showing. But as long as you got all the threads on the nut, you're good. And that's pretty much it. So, I still got the adjustment where there's no slack in the bearing. And it's ready for the spindle to go on. I got the uh, spindles on. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. Minute. It turned out really nice. I love the way it looks. I like the color of the powder coating that they use on um, their products. You see, this one takes a sway bar, which I haven't put the sway bar on yet. We're going to do that later. But, uh, and it turned out really nice. Put a brand new rack and pinion on it, just a factory replacement rack and a bump steer kit. This bump steer kit came with all of this from UPR. Strange adjustable struts, Viking coolovers. Yeah, this is cool. I only set this up, the bump steer. I just got it set up like this for now. Um, we're gonna wait, obviously, until we get this thing completely finished up with the engine dropped in, all the other components, accessories, and everything so we can get full weight on the car, get the, um, the adjustment set up for the ride height. And then once we do that, we'll, uh, we'll set the, the bump steer. We'll get it all set up right. So I went ahead and just put the factory brakes back on. Um, we're using factory spindles on this one, obviously. He said he does want to change the brakes and upgrade them. I'm not sure if we're going to do that now or if he's going to do that at a later date. The brakes work fine. There's nothing wrong with them. And he's got some really nice wheels on it. So you can, you can see the brakes through the wheels. So, you know, we're going to have this car for the rest of the winter, finishing it up. So uh, it's possible he may want to do the brakes before it leaves um we're not sure but for now we're just going to leave them on the bearings are good i didn't have to repack the bearings or anything i checked all that but man it looks really good i like the way it turned out for sure all right well we're going to get uh we're going to get these wheels and tires thrown on this so i'm going to go ahead and end this video Appreciate you guys like always. I appreciate it checking it out. And um, you know, be on the lookout for this one. We already started a video on this car right here. And uh, we've we've done a lot to this car. We're really getting it super close to being finished up. Um, we're still waiting for the engine and everything to come back from the machine shop. 
you know, for, for us to build that motor, but all the other problems that this car had, really close to being done. We still got some stuff to do on it, but for the most part, we're, we're getting close. But look out, look out for the video on that one. Um, we gotta have a video on that car too, so. But I, I do appreciate it. You know, uh, leave some comments if you'd like. Um, you know, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever you think. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing to the channel. You know, appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the notification bell for some new videos coming out. We're gonna have some more videos on this car too. Uh, we still got some work to do on it. We were doing a fuel system on it, so we'll do some video putting the fuel system in. We're gonna have some video on the engine. This is gonna be one sweet engine, let me tell you. So be on the lookout for that. I do appreciate it, like always, and we will catch you on the next video.